let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Elman, Mike Beer, race number 11 at the fairgrounds on Risen Star Stakes Saturday is the grade three fairground stakes. Let's take a look at this field of older horses going a mile and an eighth on the turf. And Mike, the number eight factor this began a very impressive string of races in 2020 right here. Winning the fairgrounds, then won the Muniz, then won the Wise Dan, then won the Kentucky Downs preview turf, <laughs> then ran second in the turf classic on Derby Day, and then won the dinner party. This horse maybe got a little sour at the end of last year after all that racing, but he's got a little bit of a break and he's got big speed. Yeah. And listen to me, he's, he's the horse. This is a pretty good race that I think there are a lot of different ways to go in here, but to me factor, this is the horse to beat. Um, his form was just too good to deny. And even his last two races where maybe he didn't run as well, those were very, very tough spots. Um, it feels like he's back in a good spot here. He's got speed. We'll see how fast uh, this pace gets, but I don't know. I think he's the horse to beat in here. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for the fairground stakes. And I'd like to remind everybody to please head on over to timeformus.com once scratches are made official. This pace projector will adjust. And if Blackberry Wine scratches out of this race and instead runs in the mine shaft on dirt, the pace will likely be a little bit slower. And factor this, likely won't have to work as hard. Yeah, correct. We'll see. I don't know what the plans are for Blackberry Wine. He would feel like a horse that, um, at least from my perspective, that I wouldn't like that much if they decided to try turf with him in this spot. Um, we'll see what they decide to do. If he runs here, he is a pace factor for sure. Certainly a pace factor. Blackberry Wine has run three times previously on turf, has finished third all three times. The last time he raced on turf way back in 2019 over yielding ground, he was beaten by a horse named Hieronymus who came back to win two stakes at the fairgrounds with buyers of 92 and 91. Now, Brad Cox has factor this on the lead. He's got set piece from the back of the pack and set piece has really put it together in his last two races with the addition of blinkers also racing on the synthetic at Turfway, last time out, he ran very, very well, going last to first. Uh, yes, both of his wins um, at Turfway on synthetic uh, last to first victories for this horse. Um, and it's really no surprise, Dan, to see him win both of those races when you just consider what he was doing in Great Britain before he got here. He was three for three on synthetic over there. Um, and that's where all of this horse's uh, wins came uh, when he was overseas. So you knew he liked that kind of surface. He was also you know, not facing this kind of competition in those two races. But I, I just thought he ran well. The question is, um, you know, how good is he on turf? I personally think that's still something of a question. Um, but when, man, when he won that Churchill race first time in this country, I, I was really taken by that performance. I thought he ran really well that day to close down a slow pace. And I, I feel like I can make excuses for his other two turf races, Dan. They may not be legit excuses, um, but I feel like I can make excuses for them. So I'm interested to see what he does here. You kind of know what you're going to get from a gate standpoint. He doesn't break from the gate very well. Yeah. He's a typical European horse in that regard. So the faster the pace, the better for set piece. Artie's Rumor and Dance Tyria, they come out of the same race. Uh, an optional claimer at Gulfstream on January the 13th. We're going to watch that race right now. Dance Tyria ran second, first start in North America for Grand Motion. Artie's Rumor's up close to the pace in the black blinkers uh, in between. Dance Tyria comes with a really good close on the outside, Mike. This was a promising effort for Dance Tyria, first time Grand Motion, who usually brings them in, uh, these foreign invaders ready to rumble. Yeah, he does. He has a really good record with the first time foreign imports. And this horse um, ran very well in that race, as far as I'm concerned, Dan. That was a very easy pace that was set by the winner in there. It was slow early and fast late. Um, and Dance Atiri had a lot of ground to make up. I liked the way he finished in there. And Artie's rumor was up close to the pace. He flattened out a little bit at the end. I'm beginning to wonder if a mile and an eighth is a little bit far for Artie's rumor. Yeah, I, I had the same concerns. I didn't think he ran that well last time. Certainly not as well as Dan Soteria did. Um, and we'll see if, you know, that added distance really keeps working against him. Midnight Tea Time is up next. One of several horses in this race trained by Joe Sharp that have good formulator facts. Here's the fact for Midnight Tea Time. Turf to dirt, two to four month day layoffs, 25% winners, positive ROI. He got washed off last time out on November the 13th. The prior turf start at Keeneland 
It was an okay effort, but the runner-up came back out of that race, was second to one of the claiming crown races with a 91 buyer, then second to the McKnight at Gulfstream with a 96. So he faced pretty good company in that race, and he has some solid figs. He does. Um, you know, he, he certainly has a chance in this race, Dan. He's not really my kind of horse. Um, when I see him run, I don't know if I've ever really felt like he was, you know, sort of a graded stakes kind of horse on the grass. He, he's, he's run fine. Uh, a good trip could go a long way for him. I, I preferred other horses, though. A logical myth has been the scourge of the turf division thus far at the fairgrounds over the winter. Won the Diliberto Memorial in December. Won the Colonel Bradley last time out. Got a beautiful trip, I thought, in the Bradley. Saving ground in behind the leaders. Got up right up the rail, turning for home after being in a little bit tight at the top of the stretch and then just shot on by. Formulator fact for Joe Sharp, when they get good, they stay good. Past five years, older last out winners in turf routes, 30% winners from 76 starters, 276 ROI, and he might get a good trip again. Yeah, this horse is a contender in current form for sure. You're right, he could get another good trip in here. I guess that's you know my real problem with this horse who clearly loves the fairgrounds. I mean, his last two races, um, just two absolutely perfect trips to win those those races. Um, the first of those at nine to one. We'll see if he gets another one. I guess if he gets another perfect trip, he can win. I'm against him this time. I want to make a case for Don't Blame Rocket. I know Don't Blame Rocket hasn't been out since September. Factor this finished ahead of him in the Turf Classic that day. He sort of fell behind a fast pace. He came with a run as he was supposed to do considering that pace. Then he was listed as a vet scratch at Keeneland a month later. And now we haven't seen him since September. So there have things been going on with Don't Blame Rocket, but yeah. he has run well at the fairgrounds in the past. And I don't think he's the kind of horse that needs to be 100 lengths off of the pace. I think he can be a little bit closer. I mean, no, I, I agree with that, all that stuff um, completely, um, especially if, if you just want to see what kind of um, running style this horse really has. Go back and watch the Bradley from last year over this turf course. He set an absolutely perfect trip away from a very strong and contested pace. I personally felt like he he got a little lucky to win that race and thought factor this ran better than he did that day. And then, of course, factor this came back to beat him in their next two starts. Um, but if this pace is fast, this horse could get another really good trip in you. Four triple digit buyer speed figures for factor this in 2020, including the 102 earned in last year's fairgrounds. He runs over any kind of footing, whether it's firm, whether it's yielding, you don't worry about that. Now, his last two races, Mike, you mentioned that he probably had excuses. The Breeders' Cup mile was too tough of a race. He had to work to get close to the pace from a tough outside post, and he really had to work in the early stages of the Fort Lauderdale last time out on a very hot pace. Yeah, and we'll just see. I mean, he was a little disappointing, a little more disappointing last time um, than he was in the Breeders' Cup. So we'll see. Maybe he just, you know, was at the end of a long campaign there and needed a little bit of a break. Um, boy, any one of his prior starts, though, Dan, just going all the way back to last January, they're just going to make him a handful in here. Um, we'll see if he gets hooked up on the lead um, and that works against him. And we'll see if maybe his form's just headed the wrong way now because that could work against him too. But man, if he shows up with his good race, he's going to be very tough in here. He's achieved has to improve from a buyer's speed figure standpoint, not out of the question. He's a very lightly raced four-year-old. I thought he ran well, considering the logical myth got the trip last time out in the Bradley. Peace achieved ran okay to dead heat for fourth, his first start since September. I think he can take a step forward, and I'm really not too worried about the extra distance. Yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with all that. I mean, really the only race of his that I don't like um, is the Kentucky Downs race um, last September. Um, you know, so we'll see. Maybe the distance has something to do with that, but I would be willing to, you know, say that that was perhaps just that Kentucky Downs, that quirky turf course around two turns. We'll see. Um, I thought he ran fine last time. He's going to be a price in here. Captivating Moon is cross-entered elsewhere on the fairgrounds card on Saturday. This is a horse that's capable on any kind of surface, dirt or turf. He prefers wet dirt. He prefers turf. Um, he's the kind of horse that, given the right trip, can make the run. Uh, I don't know. I like him a little bit better at a mile and a 16th and a mile and an eighth, but he's done well at assorted distances over the years. He has. I'm, you know, one of the people who really prefers him as a turf horse than, than as a dirt horse, even though they've concentrated on uh, dirt with him for a long time now. Um, the pace is going to be very important to this horse, though, Dan. He's, you know, sort of those, he's a sort of that one run closing kind of horse. He needs something to run at. Spectacular Jim hasn't been able to down logical myth. He's been the beaten favorite in both of those races. This meet at the fairgrounds. He's been in some, in some pace battles, both of those times. And he might be involved in a little bit of a pace battle here, chasing factor this. That seems like sort of a tough situation. Chasing factor this at a mile and an eighth, somehow lassoing that one. And now here come the closers. 
Yeah, true enough. And he's got the outside post to deal with as well. Um, to me, anyway, it's hard to go back and look at those last two races, Dan, um, and feel like he had big excuses with, with Logical Myth beating him. Uh, not that he ran terribly, but I didn't see the excuses for him. Let's take a look at our top pick for the grade three fairground stakes. Brad Cox been on a roll. He has set piece going synthetic to turf that has worked very well for him in the past from a formulator fact standpoint uh, and set pieces where we're going to go. He just needs to break with the field. He's going to be last no matter what. This pace will be fast. I expect him to be running on the outside. Yeah, me too. I, I'll, I'm just going to hope he shows up and runs one of his good races here because he is going to be a fair price. Um, so I just want to see if it sets up the right way and he can he can come running at the end of this race. I put Dan Sateri a second. I thought he was interesting as well. Um, so I have factored this third, but I still think he's the horse to beat. I, I, I'm taking a little stand against factor this, especially if the pace is hot. I thought he had a very long year in 2020. Maybe he's ripe for the Pickens first time back with his uncoupled stable mate uh, set piece. And I want to give Don't Blame Rocket a shot off the long layoff to show a little bit more tactical speed at a price. 24810 for Mike, 2765 for me. Grade three fairground stakes on Saturday. Good luck.